All right, here are our solutions for perfect problem two for math 251. Um, we're given this function, f of x equals the square root of 2x plus 1. Um, and eventually what we're going to do is calculate the slope of the tangent line to this function using a couple different methods. Um, but before we do that, before we calculate the slope of the tangent line, we're going to estimate it a few different ways. So in well, part one, I guess, uh, what we're going to do is sketch a graph of the function. So if you have calculator, what we can do is type, hit y equals and then type in the square root of 2x plus 1. Uh, and I'll just use the standard uh, window, the standard zoom, so I can just take graph and it will give me a picture. And there's my picture. So you can draw this in as much detail as you like. Um, I won't be overly concerned. It might help to get a couple points. You might be able to just look at this thing and get a couple of points on it. We'll really be interested when x equals 4. So I guess I should make sure that my x-axis goes out to at least four. One, two, three, four, five. Um, and then you can kind of see the height. Let's see, when x equals four, I got the square root of nine, which is three. So I know at this point, x equals four, the y-coordinate is three. And maybe that's enough for me to just kind of sketch the rest of it. it looks more or less like that. That almost looks linear, so maybe I'll try it again showing a little bit more of a curve to it. Sure, good enough. There you go. Uh, sketch a graph of f, an approximate graph, done. Looking at your graph, estimate the slope of the tangent line to f at x equals four. Well, the tangent line would look something like this line in red here. It just kind of barely touches the graph at this point. Um, so estimate the slope of this thing? I don't know. I mean, it's positive. So part two, I'll say approximately, because this is very approximate. I don't know, man. Um, let's see. It's going up. Looks like every time it goes up one, it goes over a few, maybe two or three, maybe approximately one half, one third. Either of those perfectly fine. Call it a half and move on. I have part three, what it wants me to do is estimate, again, the slope of the tangent line, calculating the slope of a few similar secant lines. So the idea there is we'll figure out, maybe do a couple of them, secant line one. I'm gonna use two points. I'm gonna use four and f of four which is what, if I put x in, if I put four in for x, I get the square root of nine, which is three. And then some value just above four, I don't know, 4.01. And then whatever I get when I put 4.01 into this function, I can use the calc feature on my function to figure that out under the value function. If I type in 4.01, my calculator tells me that the height, the y-coordinate is 3.003. Maybe I'll just call it 3.003. Um, so to calculate the slope of this secant line, I know that the slope is the difference in the y-coordinates over the difference in the x-coordinates. Wow, that got messy. x1. So if I arbitrarily call this x1, y1, and this x2, y2, I would say it's 3.00, what do I have, two zeros and then a three? Minus three divided by 4.01 minus four. In other words, it is 0 0.003 divided by 0 0.01. In other words, it's 0 0.3. Okay, let's do this again. Secant line two, maybe I need to switch colors. One of the points I'll keep the same, so I'm gonna use this four comma three again. But now instead of using 4.01, maybe I'll use 3.99 and see what happens. So I go up here to my calculator, whoops, go back into the graph, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the calc menu and use the value function and type in 
And what my calculator will do is it'll put 3.99 into this function and tell me that what comes out is 2.9967. Okay, let's calculate the slope of the secant line. Oh, you know, what I really should have done, I'm gonna go back and fix this. If you remember when I did calc before, I put in 3.4.01. And I think what I wanna do is keep a couple more decimal places. So it had 3.00333. So I'm going to go back over here and at least put in one more three here. And if I do, there will be one more three here, one more three here, and one more three here. Um, and I think that will make it easier. I mean, you probably don't need to do that, but let's continue. Uh, so I do the same analysis I did before. Call this x1, y1, x2, y2. So for my slope, I got 2.992 nines, and then a 6 and a 7, minus 3 divided by 3.99 minus 4. On the bottom I get negative 0 0.01 and on the top I get negative 0 0.0033. I get uh, 0.33. Um, and, uh, if I had kept more decimal places I'd get approximately this and I'd get something what a little bit well, whatever. I get values very close to this. I did these two secant lines, they were pretty close, so does it have me guess estimate this? So I estimate slope of tangent line. These are both slopes of secant lines. I estimate the slope of the tangent line to be, I'm gonna say one third. Um, 0 0.33, 0 0.33, yeah, that looks like they're pretty close to one-third. Um, you don't know that's right, it's just a guess at this point, but that seems like a good estimate. All right, finally, you can stop doing that whole take a guess type thing and actually calculate these. So for part four, it wants me to calculate this exact same thing, but use the definition of the derivative. So the slope of the tangent line to f at x equals four, a shorthand way of saying that is it's just f prime of four. What f prime of 4 means is the slope of the tangent line to this function f at x equals 4. And using it the, the definition of the derivative, I know that this is equal to the limit as x approaches 4 of f of x minus f of 4 over x minus 4. And so what I'm going to try to do is evaluate this limit. Well, let's see, f of x is the square root of 2x plus 1. And f of 4 is 3. Where did that come from? If you take a 4 and put it into this function, 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3, which is this 3 right here, over x minus 4. OK, so if I could evaluate this limit, I'd be done. So how am I doing on room? i got plenty of room. The trick for evaluating this limit, I mean, you can try just changing all the x's into 4's, but you'll end up dividing by 0. So I gotta get rid of this x minus four here. Um, and the trick you use to get rid of the square root to make an x minus four kind of pop out of the numerator is by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by what's called the conjugate of the numerator. So because I have these fractions, these rational expressions, I can multiply the top and the bottom by anything I want without changing the value of the fraction. I'm gonna choose the square root of 2x plus 1 plus 3 instead of the square root of 2x plus 1 minus 3. And choose the conjugate of the square root of 2x plus 1 minus 3, which is square root of 2x plus 1 plus 3. And multiply the top and the bottom by that thing. You can multiply out the top, FOIL if you want to think about it that way. What you'll end up with is 2x plus 1 plus three of these square root of two x plus one things minus three of these square root of two x plus one things. So that'll cancel out, minus nine. And down on the bottom, I'll have x minus four times the square root of two x plus one plus three. Note I didn't multiply out the bottom, just the top. 
because I don't want to lose this x minus 4. It's what I'm trying to cancel out. So I want to leave that factored out so that I can cancel it out. All right, a couple more steps. Up top, 2x plus 1 minus 9 is the same as 2x minus 8. And 2x minus 8 is the same as 2 times x minus 4. So I'll rewrite the top as 2 times x minus 4 so that I can cancel out that x minus 4 with that x minus 4. And what I'll get is a limit I can evaluate. The limit as x approaches 4 of 2 divided by the square root of 2x plus 1 plus 3. Well, to evaluate this limit, I'll change all the x's into 4's and get 2 divided by the square root of 9 plus 3, uh, 9 being 2 times 4 plus 1. Um, the square root of 9 is just 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. So what I get is 2 over 6. In other words, 1 over 3. Hey, look at that. I had the estimate right up there. Finally, in part 5, we're going to do this one more time, except we're going to use a different method. We're going to find the same thing f prime of 4, except we're going to do it by evaluating the limit as h approaches 0 of f of 4 plus h minus f of 4 divided by h. This thing right here is what's called the difference quotient. It gives us the exact same answers we had up here, just a different way of coming up with it, different algebra. So f of 4 plus h. Well, let's see, f of x is the square root of 2x plus 1. So f of 4 plus h would be the square root of 2 times, instead of writing x, I'm going to write 4 plus h plus 1 minus the square root of, let's see, f of 4 would be 2 times 4 plus 1. I would divide that by h. So what I get is the limit as h approaches 0 of the square root of, sure, I'll clean stuff up in here a little bit. 2 times 4 is 8, but 8 plus 1 is 9. So I got 2h plus 9. And then from that, I want to subtract the square root of 9, which is 3, divided by h. So this is the limit I want to evaluate. The trick for evaluating this limit is I'm going to multiply the top, same trip, trick I did above. Do it in different colors here. I want to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 2h plus 9 plus 3, conjugate. And when I do that, I'll get the limit as h approaches 0 of See up top, square root of 2h plus 9 times the square root of 2h plus 9 gives me 2h plus 9. The outer and the inner will cancel out. Negative 3 times positive 3 is negative 9. Look at that. And down on the bottom, I'll have h times all this stuff. Square root of 2h plus 9 plus 3. But as you may be able to see, things are going to work out very nicely. Uh, plus 9 minus 9, those cancel out. So I have 2h divided by h. The h's can cancel out. And I'm left with just 2 divided by the square root of 2h plus 9 plus 3. This is a limit I can evaluate. I can change all the h's into zeros and get 2 divided by the square root of 9 plus 3, aka 2 sixths, aka 1 third, the same answer that we had above. So what I've done is I figured out the slope of this line in red right here, which I estimate just by looking at it to be 1 half, is actually 1 third. I was able to make that guess using part 3 here, but it was just a guess at this point. In parts 4 and 5, I calculated it using different methods. If you go back and look at the algebra, the numbers are different. I mean, they're similar. I multiplied by the conjugate in both cases. But up here, the conjugate was the square root of 2x plus 1 plus 3. Down here, it was 2h plus 9 plus 3. So it's not the same algebra, it's similar in terms of methodology, but we do get the same answer, that's the key point. This is the answer, the slope of the tangent line, which is what the question was asking for. So I'll end this video here.